Welcome to Geographical Analysis Lecture 23, Spatial Autocorrelation. Spatial autocorrelation has to do with Tobler's first law of geography, that everything in space is related to everything else, but near things are more related than things far apart. So given a map of data values, spatial autocorrelation has to do whether or not similar values cluster together on a map. In the case of positive autocorrelation, like values cluster together. So if dark values are high numbers and light values are low numbers, we see that the high values cluster get together and the low values cluster together. In negative autocorrelation, this, is, uh, this refers to map patterns which are the uniform or dispersed kinds of map patterns that we were dealing with earlier with point pattern analysis. So here we see that high and low values are interspersed rather evenly across the map. One way to think of spatial autocorrelation is that it's the correlation of a variable with itself over space. Or the correlation between an observation's value on a variable and the value of close by observations on the same variable. But note that we are actually using the word correlation here. So imagine the case where we have a data value, say that location over here, and we are, uh, I'm not sure if that's showing up. So imagine we are interested in this value over here, and what we are going to do is look at the neighborhood of, those val of that value and ask ourselves, is, what's the correlation between this value and the values in the bubble around it. And what's the correlation between this value and the bubble of values around it? And this value and the neighborhood, we should use the term neighborhood of values around it. And we're going to do this over and over on our map and look at the correlation between these actual data values in comparison to the average data values in the neighborhoods around the point. And that's why it's actually a measure of correlation, because it, uh, that's, we are literally going to compute a correlation statistic. But instead of there being two variables, we're going to construct the second variable as just the neighborhood averages around locations in the first variable. Spatial autocorrelation is of interest in its own right, because it suggests the operation of a spatial process. Put another way. If you recall, in spatial analysis, we are dealing with spatial patterns that are caused by spatial processes. So a spatial process, for example, is a socioeconomic or environmental process that causes a variable to have a spatial pattern. We can use spatial autocorrelation to detect whether or not a spatial pattern exists, which then provides evidence to whether or not there's a spatial process causing that spatial pattern. But in addition to this um, kind of fundamental theoretical reason why we want to be interested in spatial autocorrelation, there's also a practical one. And that is that most statistical analyses or the techniques that we use in statistics are based on the assumption that values of observations in each sample are independent of one another. In other words, the value of a variable we measure at one location needs to be independent of the value at another location. And that assumption exists for m many, many statistical t procedures. But if a variable is correlated with itself, if it's exhibiting some kind of spatial pattern, then the spatial autocorrelation violates our assumption that observations are independent because samples taken from nearby areas are related to each other. And we can, for example, guess the value of a house at one location by knowing the value of a house at a nearby location. And therefore, those two housing samples that we have are not independent.